the the uh, mix in it and yeah. I and I think that it's really an interesting topic, especially because Parkinson's has very specific things that you have to do for home modification. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you okay. know, visual stuff that they are ones that need high contrast. So you tend to these are things that you're considering when you are making the changes in the house. So not just not just mom and dad who are in great health and just trying to plan for the future. You know, that that's pretty simple. You you can you have a big range of things that you can do. But in a Parkinson's home modification, you're you need to be considering, you know, how do they step? Where is it? Can they get through the doorways? Doorways tend to be if, if somebody is a freezer, not and remember, like I said, not everybody freezes, but if that happens to be part of their group of symptoms, you know, trying to get through doorways can be a real challenge. And so do you put grab bars on this side or this side? You know, how do they function? How do how can we make that easier for them? So and I think you asked me earlier about the realtor thing. So that so evolved because sometimes the changes that you make in your house can be really expensive. I mean, you know, a bathroom is average 25,000 and that's pre pandemic. I'm sure right now it's probably a lot more. I know um, a bathroom I'm building right now with somebody, the lumber's three times the cost and accessible bathrooms require wood blocking. That's a lot of lumber. So that alone can really just jump up your prices. So I try to tell people, you know, it's worth having a discussion about how open you are. If you love your house, you are not moving, then the money's worth it to you. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at it and you're going, wow, it's going to be 25 grand if I do this. And if I move down that house down the street that is for sale, and it's only going to need $10,000 to bring it up to that level, then we can get like an apples to apples comparison. We can look and see, well, okay, that one's going to be this, that's this purchase price. Okay, where are we at at the end of the day? And what I love about this is that it's objective. So instead of making decisions, emotional decisions, one of the biggest problems about aging and getting older is those adult children that keep telling you, mom, you need to be in assisted living. You need to do this. They get bossy, right? Yes. And it gets really emotional. It starts to be this like push pull of, you know, power struggling it. And what I love about, and my channel is age in place or find a new space is really giving people data. Here's the data. Mm -hmm. You don't, I'm not telling you you have to move. I'm just telling you that look at, look at what you could get here. Look at what you could get here. And then take that information and make a financial decision that's best for you. That, that you know, does exactly what your preferences want. Mm. It does seem like different illnesses, different diseases need different types of accessibility. Yeah. I know sometimes totally. we talk about universal design and that's a whole nother thing that I don't know too much about, but I've heard about it. And well, I know you, that I'll, I'll give you a rundown on this. So there's universal okay. design and accessible design, right? So right. Universal design. If you, the simple way to think about it is it makes the, makes life easy for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you going in and using like the faucets, it's easy for you. Somebody with a toddler gets, you know, takes the stroller and gets through the front door just as easily as a wheelchair mm -hmm. user, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say, for example, um, a wheelchair user, a spinal cord, they need to get really close to a sink. You and I don't aren't going to be sitting to brush our teeth and comb our hair. So we don't necessarily need space underneath the countertop for that right. for a roll under. Right. And I have this discussion a lot when people are doing consultation with me because, you know, you're everything that you do, you, there's a pro and con with it. You're giving up something. So like you in theory could say, okay, I just want to be prepared for everything and I want to build an ADA everything. But what that really means is that you're going to give up counter space underneath the sink, which everybody needs counter space in their bathroom, <laughs> right? You're going to be making bigger doorways, which might cut down like wall space that you might want for bookshelves. So there are lots of different things that you have to consider that are, are maybe like the Parkinson's guys need, but the spinal cords don't need. And, right. you know, the multiple sclerosis ones or whatever the progression is, maybe the muscular mm -hmm. dystrophies are going to be using power chairs, really mm -hmm. heavy 400, 500 pound chairs. You know, these are not candidates for, you know, little tiny tiles that are just going to get circular compression on them all the time. They'll just pop right up, but they're totally fine if you're going to be a walker. 
Yeah. See, this is why you're an expert. This is why I'm like, I'm so fascinated by what you do because this is so amazing.